It is the Riot Podcast. It's a Wednesday, August 10th. Nikki. Hello. Isaiah. Howdy. What's up? Hudson. Uh huh. <laughs> Thank you for acknowledging me. You're welcome. Welcome, everybody listening. Uh huh. Okay, there's your spot to say hi back. <laughs> <laughs> so, today on the podcast, actually not on the podcast, I'm going to kind of swing it uh, per usual, go off of a script. If we had a script, I wouldn't follow it. But <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> yesterday, I was walking through Radio U, right? And I got a great compliment yesterday. You did? Oh, yeah. I got a grand compliment. So I was walking through Radio U, and I, I run into Eric, right? Uh-huh. And obviously, if I had to describe Eric, he's like a huge human being. <laughs> I don't know how tall he is. He's 6'4". He, I was about to say, he's like 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, he's like a big guy, right? Well, when you're Isaiah and I's height, everybody taller than <laughs> exactly. you feels huge. He makes me feel like a little boy. Like uh-huh. If I saw Eric <laughs> on like the street, he's like one of those guys that if you saw, it wouldn't be a guy that'd be like, oh, yeah, maybe let's go mess with him. Like me, on the other hand, you'd be like, ah, we could play around with that little kid. But Eric, it would never have be you, a guy. Have you seen his deal. calf muscles? I know, they're huge. They're huge. It's like one of the biggest parts of his body. They're that massive. You notice right away is he has huge calves. He's just a big guy, right? And so when when I was walking through Radio U yesterday, I run into Eric, and the first thing he said to me, he goes, Isaiah, the beard's looking good. Oh. <laughs> and, you know, coming from, like, like if Hudson said that to me yesterday, Hudson also has, like, a nice beard. I would have been like, oh, like, thank you. But, like, Eric kind of just like a big, burly guy, and I'm like, it just makes it feel a little bit more special. Aww. Puts that little, like, you know, like that jazz in your tone, yeah. skip in your step, the punk in your fop. <laughs> yeah. <you> know? yeah. <laughs> The funk in your pop. You had, you, had a, uh, you had a nice compliment. I had a nice compliment yesterday. Aww. So I want to thank, shout out to Eric for giving me a great compliment on my, on my beard. You guys can give me a compliment, you know, whenever you want. I've complimented your beard several times. You've never given me <laughs> a compliment. That's true. It's You've how, never I'm given me a compliment. What are you talking about? I've given you plenty of compliments on the show. I, you, you did always, give me a compliment last week. I will say that. You have more, you know, your beard is impressive. I forget. Yeah, it's growing back out. Uh-huh. You know, your yeah, beard yeah. you got a, a solid beard. Yeah. Super good. Uh-huh. If you were like 6'4", and you told me my beard looked good, <laughs> then it would feel a little more special. Yeah, but since I'm 5'9", or 5'10", just not burly I compliment enough. your beard all the time, it doesn't even make a difference. Yeah, just not quite burly enough. Like, Eric's a big guy, it makes it a little bit more special. So shout out to Eric for that. Today, on the podcast, we I told a story about uh, a road trip I had with Jim one time where I unfortunately... Uh, caught pee in my hand. I don't really know how to intro that in. Other than that, I caught his pee in my hand, and it was not my favorite road trip of all time. What well, made that story so uh, so great was it was so unexpected. <laughs> I know. As it was for him. And now you just uh, <laughs> spoiled the surprise a little bit. But... Well, you know, it's how it goes. As the story develops, it, uh, you kind of like hear a couple more parts of it. Me talking on the phone, me trying to catch pee. Spoil You're spoiling the whole sh- thing. Stop. What are you talking about spoiling the whole thing? They haven't even heard the it. story. They haven't well, even heard it. For the podcast uh, bit that's coming up, we talk about a study that kind of shows and pulls back. Like, if you take road trips with your dogs, what sort of songs should you be playing for your dogs mm. to make the road trip better? Um, or what songs should you make sure to never play for them in the car? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you'll hear a bit of those examples. It sounds like. Uh, I don't want to spoil. I don't want to spoil it. Oh, I'm going to be no yeah, spoil it. Right. No spoil it. Then why should they keep listening? I'm just going <laughs> to Nikki did it perfectly. She's the professional here. She's got it. We also now. Talked about how long you go without washing your jeans. Don't say anything. Yeah. I'm not going to say anything. Does Isaiah wash his jeans? Do I wash Does my jeans? Not? Do I not? Uh-huh. Do I wear jeans? Leave it all <laughs> into a, a, up to the mystery. You have to listen on to find out. <laughs> you got to get them uh, hooked in so they're like, oh my gosh, I must find out the answer. Yeah, we also talked right. about at the very end, we talked about uh, name when it's appropriate time to give your child a name, right? Mm. And so I didn't talk about this one, so a little extra content. My view on this, uh, I think you you have to give the kid the name before they're born. Why is before that? Before they're born? I think before they're born, because like I feel like it's like a thing like in the moment, once you have the baby in your arms, I feel like you should know like what the name's going to be. Did Were your you mom guys... always want to name you Isaiah? I think so. I well, can't be if, sure. What if you had a name set in your mind? You're like, I'm going to name this child bill Mm -hmm. and uh you and the child comes and then you're holding in your arms and you've named it bill and then you look down you realize it's not a bill Bill. i I feel like day of you know like when you're holding it you should know the name of it you know this is clearly a dave i I should have named it jennifer 
Really? Well, that was supposed to be my name. And you came out not looking like a and Jennifer at all? Nikki is, is not my name. Uh-huh. Not my real one. It's pretty close to my real name. But yeah, my mom said, you know, that was that was the other option and it wasn't right. Didn't think even Jenny would work no. or anything like similar. Jenny. Yeah. No. It could be Hudson and Jennifer. That uh-huh. would be so Hudson and Jennifer weird. If I, would have been such a good name for the do show. Do you guys know what you would have been named if you were like, like if you were a boy, what you would have? Which, because my parents, I, don't know. I believe they would have named me Holly. Oh, if, if I was you a were gal. a girl. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. that's cute. That would have been so cute. You would have been such a cute Holly. <laughs> I love that name. See, I don't know any of the other names that I would have been. You should ask your mom. I'll have to ask her if they had anything else planned for me outside of just Isaiah. Actually, the names my parents have are so typical. It was like Holly, Kelly. Kelly was another one. Uh, Hudson and Holly are not typical. <laughs> no, no yeah. Holly's typical. No, it's not. It's pretty, uh, no, it's not. It's pretty typical. How many Hollies do you know? I know okay. two. I mean, unless exactly, I'm, you know more than one. Unless, it's a typical name. Unless I'm an American Girl doll. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know a Holly. <laughs> I, just, I don't like know. That. Kelly just feels like such of the time. Sure. You know? I don't oh, know if there's a the lot time. of Kellys, but there it was just so like that day and age. Uh, feels like that, like not even that babies were being named that, but just that it was a popular name, like on TV shows. Sure. And Kelly, that feels, and that feels like Holly to me too. Hudson, not as much. I think they beat the trend on that. They one. did. Yeah. They, they, they were trendsetters. For uh-huh. this. Well, I don't uh-huh. know if it's, I'd say trendsetters. I haven't really met any other Hudsons, but <laughs> it's still it's like, like a trendy. Cool it's not name. like not everybody can hey, pull it off. Let them have it. <laughs> You're right. right. It's, it's really cool. It. It's really cool. Well, enjoy the podcast today. There's lots that we would love your opinions on. So if you hear something and you're just like, <laughs> I must join in, please don't hesitate to text us at 877 radio U. Uh, put that you're a podcast listener. And no matter when um, you send that in, we'll see it for our next show and we might get to feature you enjoy all right bye guys bye hudson (laughs) bye isaiah goodbye Bye. bye everybody don't say we didn't warn you this is the worst of the riot have you been uh, keeping an eye on the Little League World Series? Probably not. The Little League World Series? Yeah. I don't think I have. It feels like... I, I feel I, like I drove past the stadium one time. You did? I think, is it is it like uh, Pennsylvania? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. So, wow, that's impressive that you even remember that. Well, uh, I never stopped. it stuck so. out to you that much. <laughs> uh, the Little League World Series, I believe the qualifying is going on right now. But uh, there is a big moment that I think even people that have nothing to do with Little League World Series or baseball in general, it's going so viral online that almost everybody has seen this. Uh, So Little League World Series qualifying was going on. It was the Southeast region final between Texas East and Oklahoma. Yeah. Uh, And we had a pitcher for Texas East. His name is Caden Shelton. A fastball got away from him, obviously unintentional. But he, uh, he throws a fastball, and it strikes the hitter in the head. It's a headshot. Yeah, uh, it's you could tell it really connected. Yeah, Isaiah Jarvis is the batter. He gets whacked in the head, and uh, so, you know, he gets to take his base. Now, uh, the pitcher, this is something I don't think you would see very often in uh, Major League Baseball, but in uh, Little League Baseball, the pitcher really shaken up after this. Yeah. And, and we're talking the guy who threw the pitch. Are you supposed uh, to tip your hat so no one fights? Like, isn't that in Major League Baseball? Uh, I, I don't know if I've heard of that, but <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. I'll believe it. But for this, I mean, obviously you could tell he is truly shaken He's up. He's very he hit upset. The guy. Uh, fortunately, the batter was fine. He was able to just go take first base as mm-hmm. you do and whatever. Uh, but it stuck with this pitcher to the point where he's like crying on the mound and whatever, getting ready to maybe face the next batter. And so the, the big moment is Isaiah Jarvis, the batter who was hit, walks over from first base to the pitcher, gives him a hug. Aww. Yeah, gives him a little uh, pep talk, tries to console him uh, because that's, it was a tough moment. It's tough yeah. to, uh, tough to um, possibly injure somebody. And I think probably part of it too is uh, he's screwing up his team in a really big game too. So just uh, an emotional moment. But some uh, everybody's just really happy Aww, about how why, the sportsmanship of the moment went. You know, grown-up baseball guys act that way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because it's a lot more entertaining when they fight with bats know, and gloves instead. I know, but a few more hugs you know, yeah. on the field wouldn't be so bad. I guess when you're 12 years old, there's probably a little less testosterone flowing than when you're uh, a little less money. on steroids <laughs> that's, in the major leagues. That's why. Uh, but I did think, though, this it, like it all seems like a sweet moment, but what if, what if... Uh, was his name Isaiah Jarvis, the batter mm-hmm. who was hit? Maybe he's the ultimate competitor, and maybe he thought the most effective thing he could do wasn't rush the mound 
start a fight. Uh, it was walk up to the pitcher. It seemed to be giving him, uh, you know, consoling him, but really he's uh, oh, you don't know playing what he was mind saying? games to him. He's like, hey, man. Don't feel bad about hitting me. I know it's a big game. Just don't hit anybody I else. know your team's counting on you. You could have really injured me. The bases are loaded now, you know? Like, you're about to blow this. Now listen. You really could, but it's fine. Don't worry. I feel okay. You didn't hurt me. Hudson, I think you're ruining what would have been a very nice moment. At what? I, that's what you got to do, though. It's sports. It's not. It's See, all about winning. You're the problem. Winning is number one. I also like if you watch the... Uh, if the you lady watch, at the end? I didn't see the lady. What's the lady do? She's just really crying in the stands. <laughs> uh, I, I did not observe it. But if you go back to the beginning where he hits, where he gets hit, watch uh, the player on the batting team that's on second base already. Yeah. After the hit. What is he? He's clapping. He's no, like, he's not. He did. He just clapped. It, look, it sure looks like a clap to me. He's like, yeah, we got another guy on. He doesn't care that his teammate just got blasted in the head. I'm watching an edited clip, so uh -huh. it doesn't show that uh, part. No, yeah, you can see the guy in second base. He seems pumped up. He's like, yeah, base is loaded. Let's go. <laughs> That's not how you're playing. Somebody man. will get on. It might not be my teammate. Or, or it might not be him. He might have to sit out the rest of the game. He might be severely injured, but hey, we got the base got, loaded. That's what matters. Got on there. That's what he was thinking. Well, everybody's different in the world of sports yeah. at any age. And that's why uh, Caden Shelton, the pitcher, isn't going to make it. Aw, did he? He doesn't have the fortitude. It doesn't show any extra clips, so I couldn't see like. Oh, they took him he... out of the game before he oh, threw another did. pitch. Oh, he, you <laughs> you can can't tell. pitch while you're crying? He didn't recover There's well. There's no crying in baseball. <laughs> well, there is. It's the... <laughs> it's the worst of the riot on Radio U. Uh, so how do you guys say your dogs do with road trips? Now, road like trips, in the car? I think road trips for a dog are different than just a car ride. A car ride is fun. They think they're going somewhere fun. It's short. They get to hang their head out the window, but you go on a road trip. You can't have the windows open the whole entire time, right? It's a different thing. If you're going on like a trip with your dog, is, does, does Jim has ever, Jim ever even done that? Yeah, he's, he went on a lot of road trips, especially when he was a puppy. He we, we, Just about every other weekend, we would do, do like a four-hour long road trip. Mm. His longest he's ever done is seven and a half. Ooh. And, uh, I mean, he's good in the car. He's He was used to it just because when he was a puppy, we were doing that like every single weekend almost, like driving mm. three or so hours. So he's pretty grand in the car. It's one of the few places that he is kind he of well-behaved. He's never peed in your car? He has peed in my car <laughs> one time. He was like 12 weeks old. Oh, okay. And... Uh, uh, it was Do you a, have to disclose that when you yes, saw your car? Yes, he was like 12 <laughs> weeks old. I had it him in like a little. He was like in a little box next to me in the passenger seat. And we were probably 10 minutes away from home. It was like a four and a half hour drive that we were making. And I look over and I just like see him start to crouch. Uh -oh. And so what do I do? I cup my hand. <laughs> oh, no. And That's I'm the like, last I guess I would do. this is they what we're have doing. one hand to steer with. I know. I'm steering with one hand. I'm cupping my hand under my dog, and he's peeing on my hand. And then uh, we were about 10 minutes away from home. And then I had no, obviously, I have no paper towels in my car or tissues because I'm just unprepared. And so I decide, best case scenario, I'll just stick my hand out my window. No. <laughs> no. It's and all then wrong. I'm just drying it out there. Thankfully, we were like five minutes away from home. But yeah, it was one of the grossest things I've had to do in the car. Wow. Yeah, well, you didn't have to. No, I know. I don't know why that was my reaction. <laughs> I, that. I couldn't like just like let him like pee in like his. But he was in a box like with a blanket down. He could just pee on that. It wasn't even the seat. It wasn't even the seat. Oh he had a cardboard gosh. box and a blanket inside of it. But in my mind, I was like, well, I don't want him to lay in it. And so immediately, I was actually on the phone at the time. And I started <laughs> screaming. <laughs> How are you I don't know. The There's a lot of question marks on the whole. <laughs> how am I steering while I try to catch my dog's pee at the same time? Well, I was phone. yelling. I was like, Jim's peeing. He's peeing. He's peeing. And then all of a sudden, I'm cupping my hand under my dog, and I'm covered in urine. Wow. Uh, uh, okay. I wasn't expecting all of that. But, yeah. Uh, so road trips, Jim's great. I don't want to be a passenger while you're driving because <laughs> if I have to go to the bathroom, who knows what happens. Nikki. No, you're just peeing in the car. He's fine with it. <laughs> I was actually also I simultaneously <laughs> using the restroom. Him. <laughs> Nikki, how do your car, uh, dogs do on road trips? I only take them like if they're going to the bark park or uh -huh. the vet, but otherwise they don't go on car trips. Oh, so they're too whiny uh, well, and too like vocal, so uh -huh. I don't want to deal maybe, with it. Uh, maybe it's because you're not playing them the right music. Oh, you this should. Is what I'm to. You. Uh, it turns out, according to new research from University of West London in the UK. That uh, if you're taking your dog on a road trip, there's actually, yeah, they can be stressful. And I get it because, uh, you know, I think for my dog and the reason why I think car rides 
are different from road trips for dogs is because a car seats are barely comfortable for humans. Forget about for a dog to sit in for a long period of time. It's just not comfortable. So they're going to get stressed out. And uh, But it turns out you might be able to calm them down if you just put on the right playlist. Uh, and so they were doing some research at the University of West London where they were testing uh, dogs' responses, psychological responses to different songs. And so I have a list here of songs that will calm your dog. Hey, all right. And okay. also songs that you should absolutely not play for your dog because it will make them upset. Would well, you like to hear first? Um, why don't, Can we pause for one moment? Sure. And pause. Then pause. We're talking about dogs. We just can't help it. Well done. And so maybe if you guys want to text in your guests and then we'll go over the list because yeah. there's also a list of what you don't want to play for your dog. That's actually a good point, especially because we spend so much time on Isaiah's... <laughs> You're in pee story. cupping uh, dog story. Yeah, let's uh, we'll, well come we back to it. We were riveted though. I know. Uh, Jim was... loves to ruin it. You know, my car <laughs> segments, all of it. <laughs> well, we want to make sure what song should we be playing when he pees in your car next. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we'll get to that. Text in your guesses at eight seven seven two Radio U. This is Radio U's worst of the riot. Question is, uh, what music is good or bad to play for your dog? Apparently, dogs have musical tastes of course it's of radio you, but. Uh, yeah obviously <laughs> uh but we have a, a new st- uh, research here that was done by the university of west london where uh, they found that uh dogs respond differently to different music different mm. stuff is calming to them and different stuff is very stressful to them well adam wanted to guess that of course devil wears prada is a good choice okay. to play for your dog uh julian says guessing jazz music uh-huh. like that sort of style and then yeah katie kind of went with that same guess like jazz classical uh instead of like metal or rock which might make them stressed out well i want to let you know that uh what is it julian and katie uh that they they are on the right track, and Adam is absolutely not. I hate to say it. Uh, well, it radio, depends on your dog. Well, maybe, but... Uh, your dog's taste in music could be different. <laughs> it might be, but I do admit the Radio U, we're not a station. We're, we're a station for you, not for your dog. <laughs> and I don't think, based off of this other stuff on the list that dogs would not like, they say... Uh, I don't think the Devil Wears Prada would be a very big fan. Uh, dogs would be a very big fan of Devil Wears Prada. Well, Eli just texted in blues. That's a good choice. Mm, well, 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 we'll see here. So uh, for the worst, I'll do the worst songs that you could play for your dog first. It is, I'll just go uh, like ACDC is on the list, Black Sabbath, uh, System of a Dance, Slipknot. And then the number one worst song, oddly enough, that you could play for your dog that it wouldn't like. Black Dog <laughs> Zeppelin. <laughs> All right. uh, they say that now. They also point out, even though there's nothing I see on the list of stuff that they that of the worst songs for dogs, they say you don't want to put uh, songs with whistling on. Oh, for dogs they, that as actually well. makes sense. Sure, they'd, be, would, that they'd would, be triggered. Yeah, make them curious, but then also just like the really intense, loud stuff. I guess that stresses them out. But then you talk about the uh, the most calming songs for dogs. Uh, I'll give you the top five. Number one. How Deep Is Your Love by the Bee Gees. Oh, gosh. Number two. You're going to be miserable in your No car. Woman, That's No Cry by Bob Marley. Uh, Everything I Do, I'll Do It For You by Brian Adams, Canadian. Uh, <laughs> I Want to Know What Love Is by Foreigner and Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. Dogs have terrible taste in music. What is that? Yeah, that's horrible. They I... say soft rock and like uh, and reggae is what dogs seem to respond most positively to. It feels like every song when you had to be in the orthodontist chair, uh-huh. like when you were sitting there waiting, yeah. it's all that stuff. Exactly. As to the, calm you uh, down from not being stressed. As the nitrous oxide starts to kick in, <laughs> and you're hearing, you're just everything the I do, <laughs> I do it for you, and your dog's like, oh, yeah, I love this. This is the good stuff Feeling here. good, feeling good. <laughs> that is, uh, according to research, that is what will calm your dogs, especially if you're trying to just keep them chill on a long road trip. Well, another option is you don't take your dog on a road trip or you just so. turn the radio off. You could. You There's just... no way you can do the radio off on a road trip, though. Are you trying to drown him out? Well, what I'm thinking is, and I don't think that Jim likes music in general. I don't think he likes to hear things or at least respond to them because whenever I talk to him, he has no different responses if I'm yelling at him or if I'm whispering to him. So he has no, I don't think he'd Does understand. He understand. Maybe that's the difference that's I need right. to do is just do a little sing to him uh-huh. because I don't think he's going to be able to understand like metal from like the softest of reggae. 
because he cannot he can't even like take 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 my voice, let alone someone singing in the well, car. I think Jim is selective hearing with you. Yeah. I think he is too. He just he, he doesn't even listen to me. So uh, maybe down. these people will listen You've to. You gotta find what he responds to, which may Next in fact be the Bee Gees. The Bee-Gees I guess. Uh-huh. <laughs> don't pee in my bed. Yeah, please, Jim. Don't pee in the car. If you could just not pee in the car. So that's the way. Instead of yelling at him when he pees in your bed, you can you know try sing that. to him. Put yeah, that'll be the next rock time. And uh, it'll calm him right down. Aww. There well, you now have we know. it. Now we have it. And uh, I'm sorry to say the Devil Wears Prada probably not going to be a popular choice with dogs, unfortunately. But if you've got a dog that likes it, and you're a lucky person. Then you can turn it up. <laughs> <laughs> this is The Riot. Radio U. Well, uh, Isaiah is still in the midst of a week without a roommate. I am. Which sounds beautiful to us. I think you're, are you suffering through? I'm not suffering, but it has been a pretty boring week for me so far. What did you do last night? I was in the hot tub last night. Oh, you spent still feel some like time you still have a great life. In the, like, hot tub, I was just in the hot tub, <laughs> scrolling TikTok, and then I went to bed. I have been getting a little bit more sleep, which has been good. Going to bed earlier because I have legitimately nothing else to do. That's actually a good point. That's probably that sounds like the best part. It you is. Well, alone. you're you're just used to being around someone, and so I think you you guys would always be like, hey, go here, go there, uh-huh. and now you don't have that. Yeah, so yeah, there's been a little bit less chit-chat in the house as of this week. But you've, you've, had, uh, you've had less to do. You've also, I picked up on having feeling like you can get away with more stuff in regards to, like, your hygiene and just, you know, not cleaning up and doing stuff yeah. like that because there's no one to hold you accountable. Precisely. Uh, and that includes... That's supposed to be yourself, by even the way. Though, <laughs> no, well, it's not really how it works around here. I don't know why we don't count, why we're not people that can judge you on your uh, appearance and your smell. As you can uh, tell, based off my appearance, I am unhygienic. <laughs> Clearly, I've let myself go. He's fine. Yeah, but the question uh, you were asking was, how long can you go without washing your jeans? Yes. Right? I don't, that, does, does that really tie into your roommate, or are you just thinking of, once you start thinking of, oh, I don't have to take out the trash. Oh, I don't have to d- wash the dishes. Also, I guess I just can just stop washing my clothes, too. See, I think this stemmed from in the beginning, but it's changed. My answer has changed as of late on the whole gene washing topic. Because obviously, a big monumentous movement right now at Radio U, we're currently participating in like No Underwear August. No underwear. As <laughs> no you guys have been wearing underwear this whole time? That's wrong. It's, it's day wrong. three. Why are you acting shocked by that? I was so proud of Hudson every morning. I'm like, dang, he's rolling jeans again? A braver man than I. I'm wearing sweatshorts every day, trying to be a little more comfy. I uh, asked you to back I, me up on one thing. You've been wearing underwear this whole month. I've been wearing so many pairs of underwear. <laughs> So many. Well, for those of you participating at home and on the road, how you feeling this morning? Free? I feel good. I Suddenly, feel clean. Everybody's still picking out their clothes where they're like, I think I will wear jeans. I yeah. will get everything. Well, what? That's ruining. So what? Are you concerned that the no underwear thing is ruining your jeans? You need to wash them more often? I think then? so. Yeah. If you don't wear underwear and you wear jeans, I think that you would need to wash them. But Because the you, jeans are your underwear. Yeah, precisely. You would never not wash you your You would underwear. always wash your underwear. Uh, of course. But if I am wearing underwear and I am wearing jeans, I don't really wash them like ever. Like, like that's very, very rare. It's summertime, like it's super hot. Don't you feel like? It, I think in like cooler temperatures, you could get away with your jeans. They're not supposed to be washed as often, yeah. uh-huh. but you gotta wash them every so often. Yeah, uh-huh. like I would say, like once, like every like m- like once a month, maybe ish is like the area. But also in the summertime, I'm not really wearing jeans. I haven't worn jeans in a while. Uh-huh. But in the fall, winter, and spring, I wear jeans pretty regularly to work. But I won't. I only really, really wear them to work. So. See, not too much sweating. One of the beauties of wearing underwear with my jeans is that I can just not worry about washing jeans. You never wash your jeans? I never wash them. At I, all? No. Do they have a smell? Don't they like get lose have their you shape a bit? Yeah, they definitely do. No. They definitely get looser. I think, yeah, I think they, get, no, I think they get worse when you do wash them and then they go back to being like much, sh- they shrink back. You're yeah, supposed they, to. Yeah. Yeah. You're supposed to. I, I want them it's stretched out. It's supposed to be out. a straighter fit. Oh, I'm geez. stretching out. The jeans that's need to stretch out. <laughs> that's that is not what's in. That is not what's in. That's actually why you're never washing yeah. them. <laughs> I just think like, I want to be as baggy as possible. What do you mean? I need <laughs> space for my expanding stomach. The jeans need to expand with me. If I wash them, then uh, it's back to square one. Well, I don't want you to let everything go this week now. 
that you're roommateless and you know you shouldn't depend on roommates as much as I feel like everybody does but like you need to do your laundry this week I have to, I did my laundry just yesterday actually mm-hmm. and so I've been keeping up I have brushed my teeth the whole <laughs> and so I've been I've been keeping up with my hygiene and whatnot haven't been wearing underwear is that unhygienic we can't really determine but I've been I've been doing pretty well okay. I just suddenly uh, got a shock of a thought of Isaiah is like all the stuff he's cutting back on when he has no roommate around. What if it includes if he's not wearing underwear in public? What if he's not wearing anything? <laughs> I know I'm just naked yeah. every day. <laughs> I'm just hanging out in the house. Underwear is the least of our worries. I, I think that um, we'll just keep checking each day because that's probably more like by the end of the week. By you're Friday, so uh, super comfortable. Yeah. Uh, but yep. To uh, but just stay inside, okay? Yeah, I'll keep it. I'll keep everything inside. <laughs> Hudson, Nikki, The Riot, on Radio U. You ready to talk Kardashians, Nikki? Oh, uh, I guess. What are we talking about? Well, we're not talking about uh, Kim and her breakup. Instead, we're talking about uh, Chloe. because I didn't realize, but uh, a few days ago, her and Tristan Thompson welcomed their second baby, a little baby boy. Uh, I didn't know what they were expecting, but they, uh, via a surrogate, they now have a, a second child. But here's the thing. That was a few days ago. And as of this moment, they still haven't named the child. Oh, can you do that? I thought you had to be named right away. Uh, I guess you don't. Huh? Uh, apparently not. At least not if you're a Kardashian child. You get, uh, special privileges. Special privileges, <laughs> to say the least. So, I don't know. It's been, uh, how many days has it been? Like, five, six days you. or something like that? Now, I, with famous people, though, it's, the baby's named. It's just not, like, the deal to announce the name. Oh, yeah. Has not been made. Well, I guess when you can strike get, money for it. She, uh, confirmed this, uh, well, this was a representative for her on Friday, actually, confirmed that uh, they have not named the baby, it looks like. So when you can get uh, publicity out of not only naming the baby, but, but not. not naming the baby, <laughs> uh, you can get publicity out of both. That's actually a pretty perfect deal. That's really playing the press to your advantage right I there. I think so. Uh, so how long do you think? Like, Do you think they've decided? She says uh, she wants it to be just right. It's well, taking your time. The only thing I can compare this to is when I got my cat Mochi uh-huh. and I wanted to source everybody online on uh-huh. social media, some name ideas. Yeah. So you want it to be right, but you want a lot of options. Um, so, you know, a couple of days to find the right name. Uh, yeah. Do you remember exactly how long it took you? I think two days. Once you got the cat home. Yeah. I was driving. Oh, no. You hit strike right when you get the animal. Oh, so no. You <laughs> So you had the name I picked, picked up, out. No, I picked the cat's name. I, well, I picked the cat up uh-huh. and then posted a pic and then really sourced a lot of ideas. Did you and test? Then finally, two days later, decided. Okay. So two days after you had the cat. Mm. Ba- after two days after you gave birth to the cat. <laughs> You finally <laughs> named it. Did you test out? Like, were you calling it different names? I absolutely. Actually, that's a great strategy. I just don't know. That would work better for a cat than a human because babies don't do a whole well, lot. You don't so have if to... you're calling it Kyle or Jim or Bob or whatever, the you know, the popular names uh, for ch- children. Yeah, these days. No uh, offense, Bob's. <laughs> Uh, but you know, it's not like your baby's gonna react to it, and I guess it's not like your cat would either. But no, I don't but know, you just you, gotta see if it feels right. It's probably just how you're saying it, uh-huh. and you don't have to tell people if you haven't decided on a uh, a, a baby or a uh, pet's name. Yeah, I don't know how the like the birth certificate thing works, right? Because that's where the baby's name kind of gets official, it becomes official. And did they force that on you? Like when you first have the baby, like within an hour, are they coming to the parents and being like, you need to name your baby yeah, or can you mom. do that in your own time? I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I'm, uh, I'm not sure how that works, but I can see the argument. Actually. Uh, I hate to say it. Chloe Kardashian has won me over a little bit <laughs> because of waiting. <laughs> I think, I think maybe it might make a lot of sense to, uh, to wait and see the baby and deal with it for a little well, while before they, you give it a name. So they had a little baby boy. Uh-huh. So what does that mean? What is it? I don't know. What is it? Perfect what? name would be Hudson. Hudson. It's a trendy one right now. Uh, uh-huh. After your favorite radio, you host. I don't think it's in the list, no. but maybe. <laughs> oh, you're going to feel so foolish when it actually is. <laughs> Hudson Kardashian Thompson. Oh, it sounds Congratulations. rich, doesn't it? Oh, it's actually very affluent. <laughs> Thanks for watching the worst of the riot. Since you made it this far, you might as well like, subscribe, and check out riot.radiou.com for even more, more riot. riot.